officials please listen to the rules and procedures that will follow for tonight's meeting. Good evening and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Town of Babylon Zoning Board of Appeals. The following is the procedure that will be followed tonight. The matters will be called in the order they appear on the calendar, with adjourned matters being called at the end of the regularly scheduled matters. Matters cannot be heard prior to their published scheduled time. When your matter is called, please submit the affidavit of posting to the secretary and proceed to the podium and give your name and address. The chairperson will then swear you in and read into the record information we have from your application, comments from various town departments, and any correspondence received on your application. The chairperson will then ask you to make whatever presentation you wish to make to the board. After you have made your presentation, the board will ask whatever questions the board deems appropriate, and then we will ask for comments from the public. If you wish to speak for or against an application, we ask that you wait until you're acknowledged, come forward, give us your name and address, tell us where your property is in relation to the property that's in question tonight, and then please direct your comments to the board, not the applicant or the applicant's representative. We have to keep a record, and we cannot do that if there are people talking over each other or cross conversations. If someone has spoken for or against an application, and they have said exactly the same thing that you wish to say, it will have the same force and effect in the record if you give your name and address, are sworn in, and say that you join in those comments. If you have anything additional to say, please don't hesitate to do so, but keep in mind that you will be given only one opportunity to speak. After the public has spoken, the board may ask the applicant to come back to answer any questions that may have come up as a result of the public comments, or for the applicant to summarize. When the applicant comes back to answer any additional questions, if that happens, that does not start a second round of public comments. Once the matter has been heard, various things may occur. The board may decide the application immediately. It may reserve decision. If the board reserves decision, that does not mean the matter is approved or denied. It just means that the board needs more time to decide, may want to go out and look at the site again, or might want to review the documents and testimony further before making a decision. In either event, the applicant will receive the board's decision in writing shortly after the board makes its decision. If the application is approved, that does not mean that you can then go ahead and start construction or whatever it is that you requested from the board. You will have to wait for the building permit to be obtained from the building department before your go ahead. On some occasions, the matter may be continued for another night. If it is continued, in most cases it will be for the submission of documents, a new survey, new plans, or something of that nature. If that's the case, no one needs to come back on the new date. The documents will be submitted and no further testimony will be taken. On rare occasions, a matter may be continued for future testimony. If that's the case, then people would have to come back to testify. If matters are adjourned at an open meeting on the scheduled date of hearing, no further notice need be given unless specifically required by the board on the date the adjournment is granted. Three rules that may affect your ability to proceed tonight. One, if the sign was not posted for 10 days, we cannot hold the hearing tonight. Two, if you commence this proceeding while you own the property, but no longer own the property, and you are here now to continue with the application, you will need either the written consent of the new owner or the new owner to be present for the hearing. This situation could come about if you sold your house or building, money was held in escrow at closing for a certificate of occupancy or permit, and you're here tonight to clear that up. Lastly, if your application is a commercial application, and it's other than a renewal, and there is more than one tenant in the building, then you need your landlord to be here. Is there any applicant that has any difficulty with those situations and would need an adjournment tonight? Is there anyone that would need an adjournment? Please rise and join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance.
First application tonight is application 24028 of Tractor Supply Company, property located in West Babylon. Name and address for the record. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Uh, Matthew Darling. Uh, I represent uh, Tractor Supply and the landlord. The address, uh, my, you, you want my, my home address in Florida, or you want the address of the property? You can, you can give me the address of the property, that's fine. <laughs> uh, 64 Route 109, uh, which is Farmingdale Road in West Babylon. Okay, and do you affirm to tell the truth? I do. For the record, we have a planning division memo dated March 14, 2024. Environmental control memo dated March 19, 2024. If approved, this application will not result in significant impact. Fire marshal's report dated February 23, 2024. Uh, uh, report. Uh, they have no objections. The fire marshal has no objections to this application. Suffolk County planning memo dated March 13, 2024. Decision of local determination, take no position for or against. We have a survey by Michael K. Wicks dated June 25th, 2008. We have a site plan by Oxford Architecture dated 215, 2004. 24, tax map acting as an area map, and? Chairman, there's four photographs. Okay, hey, what would you like to tell us about the application? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, it's a fairly simple application. We, uh, track supply typically occupies 20 to 22,000 square foot structures, but here we have an opportunity to um, occupy a larger structure um, that's existing. It's, I believe it's existing shop right. Um, stepping back for a second, track supply occupies 20 to 22,000 feet with an additional 20 to 25,000 outside display area. We call it a fenced outside display area. Uh, it's a little bit challenging the town of you know, West Babylon here or anywhere in this, this area to find a lot that would permit something to that effect without taking down significant structures or, or buildings. So here we can put everything inside. Um, so we're seeking to occupy about 38,544, uh, 344 square feet, uh, of which about 15,000, give or take, will be for their um, out outside, inside area. Okay, the, the, the merchandise that was going to go outside, we're going to put inside. That merchandise is very bulky. Um, it's, it, that's why it's us usually outside. It, it's a very low trafficked area. Um, it's things like uh, corral troughs to feed, you know, small animals, uh, fencing. It could be a kayak or two, some recreational vehicles in there, uh, like, like not, not motorized vehicles. Um, and uh, in addition to that, there's some display that's going to be uh, put out in front on the sidewalk, uh, seasonal items such as plants, uh, hanging, hanging plants, hanging baskets, uh, perhaps a log splitter or two. Um, there is a propane tank swap station out there that we like to propose to put. Uh, it's, it's a caged, uh, um, well, it, it's a cage that, that contains small uh, five gallon or, or, or five pound or, or 25 pound tanks. Um, lastly, there is in, in the pink area shown on the plan, there is areas uh, allotted for uh, small landscape trailers, the kind of trailers that you would tow behind your pickup trucks. Uh, not box trailers, not uh, anything that has any, uh, that, that would create any visibility issues, but just small uh, five by eight, or four by eight, four by six uh, foot trailers parked in these two designated areas uh, of existing parking. Um, as I said, tractor supply itself uh, is a very low traffic generator. It, the, the traffic compared to the grocery store that's there will be about half of what, what was there previously. So the parking that's being reduced to accommodate it uh, will have no impact at all on, on that operation. Um, should tractor supply ever leave, the parking is still there. The parking was designed adequately enough for, for a, a grocery store or supermarket, which is, uh, again, um, trafficked much higher than a tractor supply is. Um, and uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll one other thing is, is this, there's a side area too, which we like to eliminate parking for, for loading and unloading of vehicles. Again, the area along the, the yellow uh, the side of the building that's, that's shown in yellow, um, that area, in th the merchandise in that area is bulky and heavy, so to allow vehicles to be able to pull up that area and, and load there 
uh, would be very beneficial to the customers who buy those products. Um, I think that about covers it. Again, we, we prefer to be in a situation like this. I know it requires a variance to be here, but it, it's, it's a little more advantageous to be here than take down a four-acre site somewhere else and, and, uh, and, and do what we would do everywhere else like that. Uh, I've built stores, and uh, I've, I've built about 50 stores in my lifetime, so I can answer any questions about you know, anything else. I, I did the Medford New York store. I did Calverton store as well, but I know those are different areas, but uh, um, Tri Supply does very well on the island and wants to be here. So. Thank you. Turn hearing over to Mr. Shepard. How are you? Good. Good. Um, my concern is the outdoor storage, storage, and the location, and and what's going to be. It's a high traffic road there, and just just past you on the side there, we have the the high school, yep. children, buses, all of this all day and in, in the mornings and in the evening, and the traffic light that's right there coming out of the place is also a, a, sh a shopping center. Just to the other side of it. Yep. How and how will we? I I don't want that obstructed. Right. So you know you what can how do we? Uh, these tr so so the outdoor display and storage is just trailers. Uh, it's just vehicle trailers. Um, these are trailers that are about if I will they're they're about twenty five inches tall, uh, maybe two feet tall. You said seasonal issues that they have. That's in front of the store. So, so okay. there's a green area right in front of the building itself on on the sidewalk for a seasonal display. Uh, the pink area uh, out by the road is just for small trailers that will fit within those existing parking stalls, and it'll be much lower than a than a car or a van or a pickup truck that could be parked there today. Okay. Um, you have another pink area behind the building. What's that? Right. So. So each area comprises of about 1,500 square feet. Track Supply needs 3,000 total square feet to display the quantity of trailers that they usually display at their stores. So in order to prevent any visibility issues or, or too much activity in the front parking lot, they've allowed us to divide it up. And, and, and so they still have 3,000 feet, but 15 in the front and 15 in the rear. Any additional landscaping? Uh, additional, no, we're not, we're not going to obstruct or, or, or tear down or take up any existing landscaping at all. The landscaping that is there now is, is pretty fresh. Um, Mr. Chen is here to talk about that if needed, but the, there, there's, there are several trees up in the front. There's landscaping all in front of where the trailers are being displayed up by the, the front driveway. Um, you know, we, we feel it's adequate, but we're, but we're open to ideas, of course. You're not going to be responsible for ma maintaining it or enhancing it? Or uh, Mr. Chen will be... Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to occupy the building, and, and that's about what, we, what we're going to do. We're going to sell plants. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Is that area up in the front that's going to be for the small trailers, is that fenced in that area? No. No? Nope. nope. Just back in trailers. Oh, the trailers will be, will be tethered together to prevent theft. Um, okay. But it, it's designed so you can just... You know, when you purchase a trailer, you, you, you un, uh, an associate will unt untether it, you back your vehicle up there, load it, you know, hitch it up, and then drive away. Yeah, for purchase, not for rent? Uh, purchase only. Purchase just only, yep. Just purchase. Purchase only, yep. Okay. Yep. All right, any other questions from the board? Would anyone like to be heard on this application? For the record, there are none. We're going to close the hearing. We're going to reserve decisions. You'll get the decision in the mail. Thanks for coming down tonight. Next application is application 24031 of Prologix LLLP, property located in Farmingdale. Real quick before we begin, I just want to go over a couple of things. The, you heard the recording at the beginning. Uh, everybody that's here tonight and wants to be heard will be heard. Please direct your comments to the board, not to the applicant or any other, app or any other person speaking. Uh, you'll have one opportunity to speak. At the end of that, there'll be questions. The board will call back up the applicant and we'll have the questions answered. Please give each speaker the same courtesy that you would want for yourself. And does anybody have any questions before I begin? Okay. Name and address for the record. 
Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is William Bonesso. I'm a partner with the law firm of Fricelli, Deegan, Tirana, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Uniondale, New York, here on behalf of the applicant, Prologis, and 875 through 999 Conklin Street, LLC. With me this evening, in addition to representatives uh, uh, for, from Prologis, we have Mr. Chris Voorhees of Nelson & Pope, our site engineering firm. We also have Mr. Alex Badalamenti from BLD Architecture. In addition to them, we have a traffic expert from Nelson & Pope, Osman Barry, who's appeared before this board on multiple occasions and provided expert real estate testimony. We also have Mr. Barry Nelson of Nelson Realty, and he too is a expert, a real estate expert who's appeared and been qualified by this board in the past as an expert. Um, okay, they are going to, just let me read this stuff into the record. Okay? Yes, sir. So we have a planning division memo dated March 14, 2014. Biomental control memo dated March 20, 2014, 2024. <laughs> a, we have a survey by Jonathan Schmidt dated September 2nd, 2022. Tax map acting as an area map. The second tax map acting as an area map. We have a set of plans by Nelson and Pope. They're dated uh, 2000, November 2022. Aaron? Chairman, we have eight photographs. And Mr. Chairman, if you go to your correspondence, items yeah. one through ten. Thank you. Um, before getting into the presentation, I'd like to hand up, in addition to the materials you have, uh, some items for the board's uh, use. Uh, there is a traffic impact study that is already part of the town record for this. It's been submitted and reviewed by the planning department, but I do have a complete copy of that so for, the, uh, for this board's record. Um, I also have copies a photo array prepared by Mr. Nelson uh, of Nelson Realty Group along with a, uh, a report letter that he has prepared. Uh, I also have uh, several copies of the 200 and 500 foot radius map and uh, in addition to that several copies of the, of the proposed site plan page that uh, my client prepared. PowerPoint that I, I sent over as, uh, as in PDF format, and if we can bring up the first slide on that. Uh, this project uh, involves the property at 875 to 999 Conklin Street uh, in East Farmingdale. It is situated on the north side of Conklin Street. 1,425 feet west of New York State Route 110. It's Suffolk County Tax Map uh, Section 46, Block 1, Tax Lots 48 and 49. Uh, the application has been before the town for quite some time, over a year ago. An application was filed with the Planning Department. The Planning Department uh, reviewed our project um, issued comments to which we responded with plan modifications and provision of more detail. Uh, by late last year, the planning department deemed the application ready to go to the planning board for a site plan review hearing. That hearing was held on January 8th and generated a significant amount of public comment. That, uh, excuse me, since that time, per the instructions of the planning department and board, we have been obtaining copies of said comment, reviewing and categorizing it, and preparing responses to be submitted to the town. In the meantime, the planning department provided us with a zoning denial for the variances our proposed project will require so we could file our variance applications and schedule this hearing. Uh, so as you know, we are here this evening to discuss the variance applications uh, that are sought, or the variance relief that is sought for this project. Just to go over the current site conditions, the property in question is a total of 263,978 square feet 
or 6.06 .06 acres comprised of two tax lots on the north side of Conklin. The westerly parcel, tax lot 48, maintains an existing approximately 20,823 square foot domed structure on it. It is the U.S. Academy of Soccer, which is uh, presently still operating on the premises. The Soccer Academy parcel has a grass area behind the dome structure used as a soccer field, asphalt, park, uh, asphalt parking lot in the front of the structure with small grass area at the street. The Easterly parcel, tax lot 49, has an existing approximately 38,490 square foot building, formerly the Farmingdale Lanes uh, bowling alley, which is not operational. Uh, the former bowling alley parcel is fully covered in asphalt with almost no landscaping on site. Both sites are improved with parking in the front yard setback. Beyond the subject parcel, the Long Island Railroad tracks run along the parcel's northerly property line. To the north of that is a large PC Richard facility comprised of a warehouse, offices, and service center. To the east and west of the subject property are parcels developed with commercial and industrial uses, many maintaining substantial outdoor storage. To the south is Conklin Street, a New York State roadway and commercial corridor running east and west. And on the south side of Conklin, running west from Route 110 are various commercial uses until Locust Avenue. The photo array submitted uh, provides a good depiction of the surrounding development. As far as the zoning in the area goes, and if we could change the slide, uh, sorry, the next slide, thank you. Um, the parcels on the north side of Conklin to the east and the west of the subject property are zoned industrial, ranging from GA, G, and H industrial district. The parcels on the south side of Conklin are predominantly zoned E business district with residence C district zoning beginning approximately 100 feet south of Conklin. The subject parcel is zoned G industrial. Said zone permits any use permitted under the E business district and any other lawful use other than those uses listed as prohibited. It should be noted that among the prohibited uses are dwellings and multiple residences. Additionally, retail uses are only permitted if granted a special exception by the Zoning Board of Appeals. But what the G District unconditionally permits is a warehouse use on the premises, and that is what my client is seeking to develop. The applicant's intention is to demolish the existing structures on the premises and redevelop the site with a one-story, 35-foot high, 121,931 square foot warehouse building. As noted, this is a permitted use in the district. The site exceeds the required lot area and frontage requirements of 15,000 square feet and 50 feet respectively. We are nearly six, uh, over six acres and have a frontage of almost 450 feet. The building height is also permitted at 35 feet and the proposed building exceeds the setback requirements for the side and rear yards. No rear yard is required in the G Industrial District while our building is providing 60 feet from the rear lot line. And only one side yard of 19 feet is required, while the building will be maintaining two side yards with setbacks of 82 and 54.4 feet. But that said, we do require variances, obviously, why we're here tonight. We need a front yard setback variance. 10 feet is required, while we are beyond that at 54.95 feet. We require variance for parking in the front yard. We're proposing 47 parking spaces between the front of our building and the front property line. We are asking for permission to maintain quote unquote outdoor storage, which is basically some trailers, some of the trailers that will be parked overnight in loading bays, not in the rear yard of the property. We need a parking variance for the number of passenger parking spaces provided. 242 are required, 131 are provided. 
and we need a building area variance as only 40% building area is permitted, which would generate a, a building footprint of 105,591 square feet. And our request is for 121,931 square feet as proposed, which is 46.19%, 6.19% over. Before getting into the justification for said variances, however, I'd like to call upon Chris Voorhees of Nelson & Pope, our site engineering firm, to describe the proposed site development for the project. Thank you, Bill. And may uh, I address for the record, please? Sure, my name is Christopher Voorhees. I'm a professional engineer and project manager with Nelson & Pope Engineering, located at 70 Maxis Road, Melville, New York, and I'm the design engineer for this project. You affirm to tell the truth? I do. Thank you. If we could go to the next slide, please. <coughs> All right, so this is our uh, proposed site plan. First, I'd like to describe the proposed site circulation, parking, loading. These, the site provides two ve vehicular access points. The easternmost entrance will be utilized by truck, passenger, and emergency vehicles. This entrance is proposed with a full curb cut, large radii to allow for safe maneuvering of tractor trailer vehicles. Once vehicles enter the site location, on-site signage directs the tra truck traffic to the proposed loading area located on the east side of the building, and passenger vehicles are directed to the parking area that is located adjacent to the building on the north, south, and west sides. The truck loading area has been designed to accommodate full-size tractor-trailer maneuvering, parking, and on-site stacking. The second site access point will be for passenger and emergency vehicle access only. There's proposed site signage that will identify this, this traffic restriction. Both proposed site entrances have been reviewed by both DOT, NYS DOT, and technical comments have been satisfied. As indicated, Passenger vehicle parking is provided adjacent to the three sides of the building as described. This is served by a circulation driveway. Although the circulation driveway is, uh, is intended um, to restrict both truck and passenger, uh, one second, although site circulation driveway is restricted, both truck and passenger vehicles um, will find this loop I apologize. This will allow for emer emergency vehicles only to be uh, circulating for the larger vehicles. Let me reiterate. Passenger vehicles and emergency vehicles will be in the loop going around the, the south, west, and north side of the building. Truck traffic only in the east side. So effectively they're separated. That is correct, thank you. Pedestrian access is also provided throughout the site with sidewalks that connect the proposed building with the adjacent roadways and right-of-ways. The loading area, as described, is located on the east side of the building facing the existing adjacent industrial use properties. The building has been designed to incorporate the building office and lounge as a physical barrier that helps block the loading area from both visual and noise impacts to the surrounding area. Chris, I, I noticed that there is space situated in the front and along the sides. Is there a landscape plan proposed for this? Of course, yes. So all the green space shown is, is for landscaping. We have street trees proposed as well as a uh, hedgerow that uh, will, will block the, uh, the headlights of the, the vehicles parked up against Conklin Street. And in terms of the design of the building, it, it kind of looks like a shallow sea. We have the main warehouse building is the rectangular structure, and then you have kind of two wings that come out. Can you describe what would uses what uses occur there? Yes. Yeah, so the uh, on the the east side or the right hand side of the plan is where the loading and maneuvering uh, zone is for the tractor trailers. Those two bump outs are what I described as the office area and the the, the lounge. Those uh, those protrusions from the building will will help block both visually and, and noise impacts from the loading docks. Now, I just, I, I, I mentioned to the board that I submitted a full copy of the traffic impact story. We're not going to go into tremendous detail in, in that, but I did want to bring up uh, an, a, an, a topic that was a, a major issue uh, at, the, at the prior hearing. Uh, there's been some, some uh, a lot of information put out on social media 
that happens, unfortunately, to be incorrect. So um, I want to reference the, uh, and, I, and I will be referencing the parking assessment in the, in the project okay. study shortly, but, but I do want to, uh, to just address this before uh, letting Chris go. Um, Chris, we've noticed in reviewing the public comments submitted to the planning department as a result of our January 8th planning board hearing that a lot of people believe that this operation is going to generate 42 truck trips during the busiest times of the warehouse activities, the AM weekday peak hours. Is that a, a correct statement? So let me, let me clarify that. Um, so, so previously we made the statement that 42 uh, trips will be made. Um, it's an important distinction. This is uh, 42 trips uh, projected for the maximum uh, peak hour the AM peak hour, and of that 42 trips, 34 of them are cars and eight of them are trucks. Um, it's important to also note that this is uh, the total trips, which includes both the inbound and outbound passenger and tractor trailers. So when we're talking about eight tri truck trips through the course of an hour, that's basically one every seven minutes or so on average. Sure, yeah, that actually works out to uh, one truck every seven and a half minutes. And then the rest of the, the 34 truck trips in and out would be passenger vehicles. That is correct. Okay, so we so wanted to clear that up now. And based upon that amount of truck traffic, <coughs> is this site, would this site be uh, um, properly designed to accommodate the expected truck traffic that will enter the site without backups onto Conklin Street? Yes, as mentioned, uh, the site provides uh, stacking of vehicles uh, when they enter the site. Thank you. Unless the board has any questions. Of yeah, I have, I have questions. Sure. So explain to me about the passenger vehicles. Who are these cars belonging to? This is no, no retail here, right? No. So is it just employees? I, I'll take that. This is strictly employees of the warehouse. There is no retail activity here. This is strictly a, a warehouse and storage operation. So it is contemplated to be uh, employees working in the, do uh, in the loading areas and in the office space. The building does have, uh, as you can see, accessory office space um, that is common in warehouse facilities. The trucker lounge is basically just that. It's an area for the truckers to utilize, uh, take bathroom breaks, make phone calls, take a break. It's not, it doesn't have beds in it, it doesn't have showers in it, it's not something where they stay overnight, but it is an area where they can take a, take a break and relax between, between trips. But the, the, the uh, passenger parking spaces are for employees and it's strictly the warehouse operation. How, how many employees are there gonna be? They, f they figure that the project will generate approximately 50 uh, permanent employees, but they won't all be there at the same time. So then the hours of operation, is this gonna be? Hours of operation are basically 24 seven. It's just the nature of the, the, the warehousing business and, and it's not uncommon to find it in industrial, in industrial zones. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so with that having been said, I'll, I'll turn to the actual variances that we're seeking and, and Hold start on a second. to. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to have eight uh, eight trucks an hour coming out of there, 24 hours a day. What? No, at the peak, the peak time, the peak hour, a.m. weekday peak hour hours are between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. And you would have as many as eight trucks either entering or leaving. Not eight entering, eight leaving. So you might have five entering three leaving, and that's, the, that's based upon the Institute of Transportation Engineering studies for hundreds of, of warehouse well, Sunday facilities. morning at 3 a.m., give me an idea. Sunday morning at 3 a.m., it's certainly not a peak hour. No, well, uh, could it not. Could it be, could there be some activity? It's possible, but. Two, four, six, eight. No, I would, do you want to ad address that, what the likelihood it would be <coughs> in terms of. Hold on, I need, I need your sorry. name and address for the record, please. Austin Barry, Nelson Pope, 70 Maxis Road, Melody, New York. Can I do a firm tell the truth? Yes, I do. Go, go, thank you. Mr. Barry, you heard the question, Sunday night at 3 a.m. or Sunday morning at 3 a.m., what Ma kind of truck, tra truck traffic could you expect? No more than two trucks. 
Thank you. Thank you. So, turning to the to the variance uh, justifications themselves, uh, let's start with the front yard setback variance. This is deemed a technical variance, and and that's because of the specific language found in section 213, 169, which states that quote the required front yard depth shall be 10 feet measured from the front property line. Not a minimum of 10 feet, not a maximum of 10 feet, but exactly 10 feet. So consequently, we at 54.95 feet and not 10 feet from the front property line need a front yard setback variance as do many other buildings along Conklin Street and in the G Industrial District in general. But clearly having a larger setback is beneficial as it provides room for landscaping and additional parking in the front yard while also reducing the visual impact of the 35 foot, albeit legal, uh, tall building. Now, in terms of the variance for parking in the front yard setback, in the planning memo that was issued yesterday, uh, it was noted that this condition already exists on the premises in that parking for 110 cars in the front yard has already been approved by the board for the soccer academy. Moreover, as the photo array submitted uh, to the board will confirm, not only the bowling alley, but many other parcels on both sides of Conklin Street in the area provide parking in the front yard. So as such, it's really a, pattern, a part of the pattern of development and makes up part of the, the character of the area. The outdoor storage. This too is something of a technical variance since the need for this variance was only identified after the applicant was asked by the planning staff if there would be times when trailers might be parked overnight in the warehouse loading bays. Being candid, we indicated that there might be times when this would be the case. As the loading dock is not in the rear yard, it necessitated this relief. That said, such a condition will not be typical as it runs counter to the site's overall operation. But even if and when it does, the trailers will be in the loading docks and nowhere else on the property. Even that would be permitted in our, if our property was wider and our loading docks were facing the rear of the property. But more importantly, there will be no outdoor storage of materials or equipment anywhere on the property. And the only quote unquote outdoor storage will be the occasional trailer parked in a loading bay. For this reason, the applicant has no problem with the suggested condition associated with outdoor storage in the planning memo, namely that, quote, any increase of outdoor storage in non-permitted locations will require further approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. We're, fi we're fine with the condition to that effect. Next, the parking variance. 131 parking stalls provided, 242 parking stalls required. On its face, a substantial variance. However, from, the, from an impact standpoint, it is a relatively low impact. And that's because as much as the town zoning ordinance requires that many parking spaces, a review, and this is in the parking assessment contained in the traffic impact uh, study, that, or trans, uh, traffic impact study that was submitted, the ITE, the Institute for Transporta of Transportation Engineers, in their parking demand manuals, uh, study hundreds of different uses, including warehouse uses. And they look at different sized warehouses and what those warehouses actually generate in terms of need for parking for, uh, for uh, passenger uh, cars. In this case, the Institute uh, looks at the warehouse use, and when they look at it, they include ancillary accessory office in their calculation. When the standard applied for warehouse uses by the ITE is applied to a warehouse of this size, 121,931 square feet, the ITE indicates that the parking demand, the passenger parking demand for a facility of that size will be uh, 48 parking spaces. We have 190, 131, so we have 83 extra parking spaces based on that. But to be even more conservative, Nelson and Pope looked at breaking out the office space and, and looking at that separately 
from the warehouse space because like I said, in its warehouse calculations, they, they, uh, they already factor in office space that's ancillary to the warehouse use. We broke it out separately. So we looked at the uh, 114,000 square feet of warehouse space and the 7,500 square feet of office space. Using the ITE uh, requirements for both, that triggered a need for 96 parking spaces. So even at that level, we have 35 extra parking spaces then needed according to the ITE, the Inst Institute for Transportation Engineers. But the, uh, the traffic study didn't end there. We wanted to provide the board with some anecdotal evidence. So we went to five existing um, Prologis warehouse facilities. This will be the first one in, on Long Island, so we couldn't go to any in Long Island, but we went to five uh, sites in New Jersey, uh, Lindhurst, New Jersey, Teterboro, Carlsbad, Cranberry, and Newark. We looked at facilities of a similar or slightly greater size, and we looked at how they operated with how many parking spaces. Every one of those five had either less parking spaces than we're provided, or one had 132 parking spaces, but had 133,000 square feet. All of the parking ratios for those were higher than the parking ratio that we're providing. All of those, th those five averaged together were one parking space per every 1,504 square feet. We're at one parking space per every <coughs> 931 square feet. So both the anecdotal evidence and the ITE data and predicted parking demand support that there's more than adequate parking on site. And happily, that's not just me saying that. Um, the traffic study was reviewed by Cameron Engineering, the planning department's uh, consultant that looked at the traffic uh, impact study. They had made comments to make changes to it, consider additional items, and once the traffic study was deemed complete, they issued a letter on November 13th, 2023, and I'll read in pertinent portion. As noted below, the traffic study was corrected to include a parking analysis uh, that's, uh, that supports the provided number of parking spaces. Quote, we offer no objection to the town granting the required parking variance, unquote. So I think that Address, certainly addresses the parking variance, which leaves one item, which is the building area variance to go Can from- Can I just ask you a question? Yes, sir. Well, let me just make an announcement Surely. first. That traffic impact study is on the Town of Babylon website if you want to go to there, and if you want to see the whole app thing, you can see it on the website, all right? Correct. Also, I have a question too. Sure. So is look, this looks like 21 trailers could be parked back in here. Correct. Do there you anticipate that many being overnight storage? No, 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 no. As I said, the, you know, the, look, there are occasions when a truck comes in late and the staffing is low and they won't unload it until the next morning. So that vehicle will stay there. Or there may be times when the truck is unloaded, but the driver is not prepared to, to, to go yet. So it may, be, it may be a situation where he gets a ride to, to a motel or something, comes back the next morning and drives away. Yeah. So it's, it, it would be counter to their operation to have a lot of trucks stored there because they need those bays open to load and unload the stored materials. Would any of those trucks be running at all? Once there are, they have strict idling uh, rules that they build into their leases that the, the drivers are told that once they get into the loading dock, they are to be, they are to be shut off. Okay. Uh, and would any of those trucks be refrigerated and need to run? Uh, unlikely, I'm being told. It's not, it, it's not that kind of materials that are, that are supplied. They not don't really do. This is not a refrigerated warehouse. It, we don't know. We don't know who the tenant is going to be. The nature, Frank, <laughs> you know, I, I understand that that's surprising to people, but unfortunately, it's true. The nature of warehousing is it's, it is 
least when the demand is present. They don't go to a prologist and say, hey, we need a warehouse two years from now, so build one and then we'll take the space. No, a tenant in need of, of, of warehousing is finding a warehouse that's already built. So this is built basically on spec. And, and they can't say for sure who their tenants would be. They, we can tell you that they do have tenants. I, I think you do have some Amazon tendencies. You do have uh, what some some uh, Walmart tenancy. Yeah, there's a, there's okay. a, a significant array of users, but but they don't know who the tenant will be at this time. So, so you're just building this warehouse with no tenant, and what if you don't get a tenant? Well, with the nature of of um, business these days, there is tremendous need for storage. You know, the, the uh, online buying, the, you know, the advent of Amazon and, and Walmart online and all these other, other companies that work through the internet, a lot of delivery work is required. It's, uh, it, warehousing is, is booming. Um, I just built, I built, I, I just got approvals and, and the building was completed for a warehouse uh, in Hempstead. Right now, uh, it is completed at, but not filled. It's presently sitting empty because they're taking, they're taking basically bids from various tenants. And how long has that been empty? Uh, it was built, it was completed, I believe, in November. Let's, since so we're doing this on speculation, let's speculate a little further. What do you, what do they, deliver and unload and load in New Jersey. Do you have any idea? Somebody want to speak to that? I mean, wh what, William, want to step up and just I indicate what types of tenants you have in your, in your other facilities? What? Let me, you know, basically, let's do that, but also, like, explain exactly how this operation works. Like, trucks come in with well, stuff? They my, yeah, my okay, that's fine. Yeah, my next, just, Answer that question. Name and address my, my for the record, please. Witness is going to, to okay. give a more details about the operation. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, William Tim. Um, address is One Meadowlands Plaza, Suite One Hundred, uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey. And you affirm to tell the truth? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Prologis, we have a wide range of customers that we work with. Um, a lot of our buildings, uh, throughout our portfolio, we we achieve about 97 percent occupancy. Um, our customers could range from FedEx, UPS, um, automobile companies like BMW, um, Walmart. So there's a wide range of them. We work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies uh, to supply them with storage space that they need. Are there any companies operations. that uh, have hazardous materials that you um, pull? Um, it it depends potentially on what the tenant's use is. Um, there are cases where um, they may. Is that yes or no, or do you have them? I mean. Yes, we have, have tenants in our that portfolio that store hazardous material, but um, we build the space to code requirements and all the requirements to meet all the uh, safety requirements to store that type of material. Well, we don't know that in advance. If it's going to be storing hazardous material. Well. I don't know if the town knows it, but the, the uh, Suffolk County Department of Health Services has to know it because they regulate the storage of hazardous materials and any, any uh, facility that is going to store those has to obtain approval from Suffolk County Department of Health Services. So I don't know if there's a level at the town that gets notified or, gets, uh, or requires approval, but suffice it to say, any and all federal, state, and local regulations that apply to the storage of any materials deemed hazardous, and that's also defined by Suffolk County, um, that has to be run by and approved by Suffolk County. Anything like groceries, produce, meat, no. fish, nothing like no. that? Nothing, nothing like that. Nothing like that. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm asking in Jersey. Uh, yeah, no, that it's not. It's not wet goods. It's not goods that are perishable. Things like that. No, it, these are these are are dry dry stock, uh, not refrigerated, not perishable. It's as noted, materials, machine, uh, uh, car parts, could be anything like that. Make any vehicle maintenance on the site? No, 
They will be performing no vehicle maintenance on site. This is strictly a loading and unloading uh, warehouse operation. Any such, oper any such maintenance would be done off site. When you exit the property, are you going west or are you going east? You go either way. Um, the you go west, there's a middle school and there's the town village. It's a very high cafeteria. Well, I mean, look, most, I, I would guess, and, and we could have Mr. Barry t uh, uh, address this, but my guess is that the easiest way for the vehicles to exit the area and get onto main roadways would be to go back out to 110 and either go north or south. But, but it, 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 okay. Um, be that as it may, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let Mr. Barry address that if, if the board wants to hear from that on that. But in the in yes? Okay. Mr. Barry, do you want to address how vehicles will typically leave this, you know, leave this site? Based on the distribution of traffic coming out of this site, they will all be leaving. Most of them are going to go to 110 and head out. Most of the traffic will get out of uh, Conklin and head to 110. So you're making a left out of there? Left out towards 110, correct? Yes. You're not going to be going east. I mean, I mean, you mean east to 110? Yes. East to 110. West is going to the 135. Yes. So you're going to be going towards to 110. 110 yes. East. Okay. Well, it, it's not four lanes of traffic, from what I understand. Two lanes. It's two lanes, it's two of, lanes traffic of traffic, with, traffic with, with the center turn lane. Okay, okay. That's, that's, not, that's not how we run the meeting. Everybody will have an opportunity to speak. I can't have you shouting out like that. Let him speak, you'll get to speak, and then we'll ask the questions, It's please. two lanes of traffic with the center turn lane. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. It's two lanes of traffic two lanes with of traffic. center turn lane. Plus a turn lane. Thank you. Now, if I may, uh, regarding the building area variance, I'd like to call up Mr. Alex Battalamenti. Mr. Battalamenti is with BLD Architecture, the architects who designed this facility, <laughs> and he will give the board a better overview of, of what goes into the design and why the additional space is, is, import is extremely important to the applicant. <coughs> Name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Alex Battalamenti, President, BLD Architects, 31 Mes West Main Street, Patchogue, New York. And do you affirm to tell the truth? I do. What would you like to tell us? Thank you. Uh, we, our practice, uh, we have 20 people located in Patchogue, uh, and uh, I've been designing buildings for 40 years. Currently, we're doing about 4 million square feet of industrial distribution buildings across Long Island. Uh, and uh, this building is designed as a state-of-the-art warehouse distribution building, as mentioned by Bill before, 121,931 gross square feet. The building is attractive, it's modern, energy efficient, and consistent with Prologis's reputation for quality, uh, high quality buildings. As you could see earlier from the renderings, we utilize precast concrete panels that are painted in complementary uh, natural tones of gray uh, and clear glass along with uh, very natural landscaping. Uh, one of the variants requested or not requested is height. Typically, in today's day, we're designing these buildings with a 40-foot clear height. Uh, it's the standard today for industrial buildings. So adhering to the 35-foot allowable zoning reduces our maximum clear height to 30 feet, uh, allowing for structure and pitch. Uh, that requires internal re leaders. It also inter it requires internal drains and very shallow pitch for the roof. So squeezing it down, at most, we're going to get 30-foot clear. In industrial buildings, cubic square footage is more important for racking and the loss of 10 feet, the loss of the 10 feet for the as of right 105, 591 gross square feet equals approximately 1,055,910 cubic square feet.
So as mentioned before, our proposed 121,000 square feet is 16,340 gross square feet above the allowable 40% lot coverage. And I think uh, somebody mentioned 46% over, 6%. That 6% at a 30 foot height provides 490,200 cubic square feet. That makes up almost half of the height loss volume volume of the ideal clear heights in a 40 foot building. So at 30 feet clear, we need extra room to accommodate what's needed to, to get to the million square foot loss. I'll, I will state that eliminating this 16,340 square feet will compromise the efficiency of the internal building layout as well and the racking, affecting its ideal aspect ratio, which is its length to width, making the building even thinner than it is now. Currently, this building is approximately 250 feet wide at the loading docks. This typical industrial buildings require, once you hit the loading dock, there's at least 60 foot clear called a speed bay. The speed bay is for unloading of packages. It allows a driver to unload all the entire length of the tractor trailer at the same time into the speed bay so that, that trucks can get in and out as efficiently as possible. And it allows them to handle the merchandise to let the forklifts tra traverse left, you know, north and south to get into the bays. Each bay after that 60 foot speed bay, we have large clear spans. Industrial buildings uh, try to limit the number of columns. That makes the trusses at the top deeper. We have four bays that are 47 feet, six inches clear for racking. It's all about racking. How many pallets, how many racks you can put to get the product that you need in the building. By reducing this depth, the 16,340 square feet, it will reduce the, the width of the building approximately 38 feet basically elim eliminating int one entire bay for the entire length of the building. Uh, one other item I want to mention is that there's a, there's a design ratio of number of trucks to gross square feet, usually one per 5,000. So reducing this building uh, down to 105,600 uh, square feet puts us below the one per 5,000 gross square foot ratio, which is the minimum ratio that we look for in a building like this. Uh, I just want to point out, uh, Chris had mentioned uh, the wings, what I call wings to the north and the south, uh, which offer two benefits. The, su the southeastern wing uh, shields all of the loading dock bays and the trucks from the street traffic. Uh, additionally, the northern wing uh, as potential office space, as, as the southern wing as potential office space, allows Prologis the flexibility of not having one tenant, but up to two tenants in the building, having a northern office and a southern office. Uh, that concludes what I have to say. So, so just to sure. go back to the reason for the variance. So the reason for the variance to make the building bigger is financial, I'm gathering. It's, it's marketability and it's operational um, um, efficiency. <coughs> and we basically, I think what Alex is saying is that we basically had two options. We either go higher and we could stay within the required footprint or we stay within the required height of 35 feet and we have to expand outward. Now, back when we first sat down with the planning department about this, we talked about going to as much as 45 feet. The, the planning department I indicated to us that that would be a significant concern because there's nothing in the area that tall. At the same time, by expanding our building area by to 46% uh, percent as opposed to the 40%, it, if you will, it's an invisible variance because it's not encroaching on any required setbacks. We more than meet the setback requirements on the two side yards 
We are 54 feet off of the front property line, and we're six, 82 feet uh, off, uh, excuse me, 60 feet off of the rear property line. So it's not like in order to get that, that additional building area, we had to go much closer to the property line. We have a, and, and as such, it's not as impactful, especially with the attractive facades that are being put on and keeping the height at 35 feet. If we were to shrink the building size but go to 45 feet, that would seriously be out of character. Whereas this, even with the slightly larger building area, has less of a visual impact, certainly, and doesn't impact the operation of the site in any way, shape, or form. It only enhances it. So the benefit to the applicant here is the the benefit to the applicant here is the operational efficiency and the marketability that they gain from the additional space, where the detriment is really nil because it doesn't generate any uh, any more trucks. I think and we can pull uh, Mr. Barry up here. He'll indicate that at the peak hour, it'll generate one more truck. So instead of eight during the peak hour, nine. Uh, but the site can easily accommodate that. And consequently, it's a, when applying the balancing test, the benefit, certainly in our opinion, weighs in favor of the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That, that's our direct presentation, Mr. Chairman. Unless the board has any uh, further questions of, of me or my, my um, experts and, and consultants, we'll, we'll take a seat and listen to the public comment. I would just ask for the opportunity to respond to that and provide a, a summary and closing. Any other questions from the board? This site is possibly you could have two tenants or one tenant only? No, it's possible they could have two tenants. Does that change as far as uh, the eight trucks per hour? If you have two tenants, how many trucks is that going to be per hour? No, it's eight, the, the, truck, the truck generation per hour is based upon total square footage because if you have two tenants, yeah, you could have potentially two businesses that are being uh, providing storage, but they've only got half the space to put it in. So those trucks will come less often. They Three kind of tenants, it's four a wash. Tenants, five tenants? No, no. Two tenants would be a, a, a facility of this size really can't accommodate much more than that, and and there's not a tremendous need for anything that would be less in size than that. And and you know just to give you an idea, this is a 121,000 square foot uh, um, warehouse, and the warehouse space itself is 114,000. If you if you happen to go by the uh, PC Richard facility that is just to the north of this, um, that is a warehouse, offices, and um, um, service center. That is a complex that's over 600,000 square feet in size. And if you go there, first of all, you'll, fa you'll count, because I counted it, 558 cars uh, striped for passenger cars. That works out to be a ratio of about one car for every 1,075 square feet. And, and we're at one car per every 931 square feet, so we have a, a higher parking uh, provision that we are, uh, or more spaces that we're providing per, th per, uh, per um, uh, thousand square feet. But you'll also see that that is not just a warehouse, but it's also offices and a service center, and it still operates fine. There are a lot of trucks, and there's, a, there's outside storage there, but it operates fine. So with two tenants, you still have enough space for office space and parking? Yes, it, th by having the two wings, you could allow for office space for one tenant and office space for the other tenant. Now, would that eliminate the trucker's lounge? Probably the not. They would probably just, in, uh, just implement the truckers, trucker's lounge in their space because, again, since if there's two tenants, they need less office space. Which we don't know you'll have because you have a different We don't. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to be heard on this application. I've seen your hand go up first. <laughs> Everybody's going to get their opportunity. Name and, <coughs> name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is James Bands. I live at 17 Locust Avenue East in East Farmingdale, right down the road from there. 
<laughs> and do you affirm to tell the truth? I do. What would you like to tell us? Um, I would like to thank the board for the opportunity to speak tonight. We were not afforded that the last meeting that uh, we were asked to come down. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say, while it's fresh in my head, that I can't imagine, well, they put on a very polished um, presentation for us tonight. This building is being built on spec. They have absolutely no idea who the tenant's gonna be by their own admission. How can they possibly, with a straight face, tell us what the future transportation needs would be for those tenants when they, they don't even know who they are? They picked a bad spot. When uh, he was talking about the, the zoning and he was talking about the, to the north there's the tracks, to the east, to the west, it's all industrial and commercial. He was a little spotty when it came down to the south. It's not a couple of residential homes. It's a community that's already under siege from traffic, incessant traffic all the time. And now you're gonna put a 24 seven operation in there. And if approved, without even knowing who the tenants are, they're trying to tell us with a straight face that they are gonna operate eight trucks or nine trucks at a peak hour? It's absurd. Once it's approved, there's absolutely no way for anyone to regulate it. There's no one here that can regulate it. And that's no fault of yours, it's no fault of theirs. They're here to make money. I, I, the last meeting I said that this was the forgotten community, East Farmingdale. I wanna change that. It's almost like it's the go-to community because we're divided in half. Half of the electric, you know, we're, we're in Suffolk County. I happen to be in Suffolk County. I could take a rock, row it a little rest, uh, west, excuse me, and I'll be in Nassau County. But they, their votes don't count because this is in Suffolk County. Even though they are very much affected the same way we are, their votes don't count. And this community is very skeptical. We were told years ago, I've been in this house for about 22 years now. I grew up in Farmingdale. Um, we were told the same thing about Republic Airport. No, 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 it's not gonna expand. It's not gonna do this, it's not gonna do that. We're gonna limit the operation hours. There aren't gonna be any flights late at night. I don't know if anyone, uh, anybody here on the board lives in this community. <laughs> That's the furthest thing from the truth. And quite recently, by the way, the, the heli because of the expansion, the helicopter patterns have changed. And if you thought the planes were bad, you should hear the helicopters coming over East Farmingdale at a low altitude coming into the Republic. It's not just the noise, it's the rattling. We have kids in our community walking down that block every day. I don't, don't tell me, I, I can't uh, tell you exactly how many years ago, but seven, eight years ago, there were fatalities on that road and that whole road was redesigned to be safer. Now you're putting a big question, if you, if you go down that road in the morning, it's, it goes from four lanes down to three, okay? And in the morning, during the peak operations that they want to operate, and they, were, and, they, and they brought up P.C. Richards, okay, they brought up P.C. Richards. You go down that road, those P.C. Richard trucks are parked in the middle of that road on the suicide lane, that they call the suicide lane because it's a middle lane that turns left and right, going into the deli because that's the only way to park over there. These people and these truckers are gonna have to eat. They're gonna have to go somewhere. There's only, f there's only a certain amount of parking. They picked the wrong spot. This would be a perfect opportunity for government and private investment to move right down across from the Home Depot on the other side of 110, where that con contaminated area, where they can have rail spurs, they have all the room in the world. And this way, they can contain all the traffic going across 109. Oh, excuse me, going across 24, I'm sorry. I mean, they, they're saying they wanna go up and down 110. They're not gonna go up and down 110, they're gonna go to the 135. They're going to go past that school every day. There are kids that walk, hundreds of kids that walk down that block every day to go to school. It's not right. It's the wrong spot, and there's absolutely no way they can tell us with a straight face 
how much traffic is going to be generated during peak hours and how much traffic is going to be generated overnight and they're saying that the overnight traffic what's the easiest time for a trucker on long island to get from point a to point b is it during peak hours of course not it's totally congested as it is the best time for a truck to operate is in the wee hours of the morning and i can tell you very matter of factly that is what's going to happen I can go on forever, but I want to give uh, everyone else a chance to speak because I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people that want to be heard on this. So I thank you for the time and the opportunity, and I welcome to hear the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Address, name and address for the record, please. My name is Michael Sutherland, 52 Cedar Avenue, Farmdale, New York, 17 houses away from where this place wants to be built. Do you affirm and tell the truth? All truth, nothing but the truth, okay. even on the oath. <clears throat> you got to understand what, the, what they're taking over right now is two recreational facilities. You have a bowling alley, you have a soccer stadium, right? The bowling alley, Unfortunately, thanks to COVID, went down and out, as did a lot of places. Soccer place is still up and running. That's two places for our youth to go to and enjoy and take care of. They talk about the size of this building, 35 feet high. There is nothing that high in that section over there. And then you want to talk about the high racking? Now, I've lived in the area for 59 years. I've been a volunteer firefighter for 44 years. And you want to know how hard it is for me to get from my house, which is 17 houses away, because I live on Cedar Avenue, to get to East Commons Road, where the firehouse is, because of the traffic, is absolutely absurd. <coughs> to the point of it's delaying our response time. And to go even further on that, once I get to the firehouse and I get behind the wheel of the truck to take it out to go save somebody's life, I can't even get off the block because nobody pays attention to the don't block the box. So we have to sit there and try and wait for these tractor trailers to get out of the way so we can get the fire truck to where we need to go to save somebody's life. Price Parkway is where PC Richards is that they want to talk about. And I hate to tell you folks, Listen, that place has been there longer than you've been excuse around. Me. Excuse me, you have to That the used box. to be, uh, I apologize. Okay. Th that used to be called White Rose. So Price, uh, PC Richards went in there and did nothing new to the building. They took over White Rose, which is on a total commercial street, the entire block. As a matter of fact, PC Richards is at the end of the block where there's a little cul-de-sac to turn around and come back out because White Rose used to utilize the um, train tracks in there because that's how they got a lot of their uh, product in and out. <clears throat> now, a lot of the other stuff they're talking about is they cannot honestly, and again, they're under oath, tell us who's going to take over or who's going to be in that building. Come on, you guys are smarter than that up there. They know who's going in there, and they're going to turn around. So if they don't know, he's going to tell me there's going to be only eight trucks. I'm going to tell you again, I worked for UPS for 34 years on Smith Street. And let me tell you something. We brought in 38 trucks a night and put out 40 trucks. And then in the morning, we'll put out 300 package cars. And that building's smaller than this one. So you, you're really going to talk about a distribution center? It's only going to have eight, and they want to expand it. And now they want to put all this racking system in there. Trust me, the day we go in there to fight a fire and one of those racks fall on us, my wife's coming to you. God bless. Do anything yet. Like, I'll take you. I'll take you. <laughs> Name and address for the record, please. Donna Sutherland, 52 Cedar Avenue, Palmdale, New York. Do you affirm to tell the truth? Yes, I do. What would you like to tell us? I would like to tell you that the traffic study, which I sent to Mr. Schaefer, is inaccurate. First, the date of the traffic study, Tuesday, May 15th, 
It wasn't a Tuesday. It was a Monday. They said they did it seven days. What happened to the other six days? Why didn't they confer? Uh, do you know what that, that happened on that six days? Then it wasn't, so I'm not going to direct it to him. Their representative of Prologix stated here under oath 42 trips. He said it, and it's in your minutes. 28 entering, 14 exiting. But like, how, can, how do they know? They say they don't know who's going to be in that building. How can they say the tractor trails that are coming in and out of that building? It's impossible. That road was a four-lane road. 2014, we lost five teenagers. Five. Whew. Okay, wait, I'm gonna get better. Andrew Cuomo stepped in and made that two lanes. Now we're gonna have tractor trailers going down that road with a church and a middle school, and there is a, a, a there is a, um, a fellowship hall as well that hands out food to people who can't afford it, that walk the street all the time. You're going to have tractor trailers coming down Conklin Street. It's, it's impossible. It's totally, it's just not reasonable. They don't care. And they say their company cares about people. Okay, let's see. 2017, the company didn't maintain, didn't, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Didn't maintain, I can't look at them. Didn't maintain their building. Their, their building caused cancer. 2021, they violated the California Water Code. They settled that, they, they paid that fee. 2023, they derelict building from a Kmart Center. That building went on fire. Firemen's lives were at stake. 2021, they didn't maintain, they had highly flammable stuff in there. It was hand sanitizer. They were told not to have that kind of stuff in the building. They didn't care. 200 firefighters had to go and fight that fire. I wrote this whole entire email to, to Schaefer, told him where to find the information about a company who doesn't care about a community. All they care about is making money. So how come, how can you allow this company to build right across the street from a neighborhood? It's, it's, they don't care. They don't maintain their buildings. They say, oh, we're gonna make it look nice over here, put it over, no, they don't maintain it. The facts are there. The facts are there. They do not maintain their buildings. So I really hope that you decide not to allow this building to go there because it will not be good for the community. And if anything does happen, the town of Babylon will be held responsible. Would you like to submit that? I submitted it. You submitted it? I sent it. it. I'll give you this again. Take the lady, the lady over here. That's what a lot of these discussions are about. <coughs> Good evening. Name I'm and address for the record, please. Jessica Santangelo, 6 Oak Street East in Farmingdale. Is your firm tell the truth? I do. I would would you like truth. to tell us? Just a couple points. If there's such a tremendous need for storage, and these sorts of facilities, it seems strange to me that there would not be already some tenants, prospective tenants that are lined up. So that feels uncomfortable to me to have no idea who might be moving into this facility and storing items. Whether the building is built to whatever specifications would need to be to contain hazardous materials and whether or not the county would even allow that if that came to be, <coughs> my question to you all is, is it worth the risk to the homes that are within several hundred feet of this facility? If a facility like this was being proposed somewhere else, Smith Street, Millbar Avenue, somewhere farther away from homes, I might be more likely to support it. But mm -hmm. this location does not feel appropriate. With respect to traffic, I think we all know that if there are trucks that will be turning left to head towards 110, they'll do what we do when we're trying to turn left on a busy road and they'll nose out, nose out, nose out until they can dominate that lane and turn out, increasing the risk to everyone who's driving in this already congested area. It's not a good site to have this happening, and we certainly don't want these trucks moving through the village and going to 135. I'd also like to point out that just around the corner, just mm, three or four inches to the right of that blue arrow, is the proposed development of uh, the property that Stu Leonard's was supposed to be built on, that Acadia is proposing to build on, that green area there, um, on the southwest corner of 110 and Conklin. That would also be having truck traffic coming in and out. So I think we have to consider the totality of the impact on this very small area 
if we end up having two warehousing facilities with large trucks coming in and out impacting Conklin. And finally, I think probably the most important thing to me is the character of the community. Right now, my daughter is able to participate in soccer at the soccer academy. Um, we used to go bowling, but not anymore. When we make decisions like this, it's not just about what things are zoned for and what could possibly go there, but what do we want as a community to be there? What does it do to impact the character of the community and how we use the spaces within our community? For that reason alone, this is not a good place for this warehouse. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, it's the guy in front of you. <laughs> the blue shirt? Come on. I'll get to, we'll get to you. <laughs> Name and address for the record, please. How you doing? My name is uh, Billy Innes. I live in Farmingdale. My address is 41 Birch Avenue East. That's uh, down the block, uh, not too far from there, maybe a quarter mile. I'm an East, you know, East Farmingdale resident. I spoke on do the you, last. I'm do sorry. you affirm and tell the truth? Truth, nothing but the truth. Okay, go. All right. <laughs> sorry. Um, before I get started, I know some people said this. I don't want to really get into it too much. Everybody. Uh, some people spoke here and I really got into it last time. We really don't feel accepted in East Farmingdale. I feel like a Farmingdale resident. I don't feel like a town of Babylon resident so much. There's not much there for us in any kind of recreation or help. There's a park, it's neglected. Uh, and uh, you know, so we, we don't feel so good. We're, you know, we're, our location, we are, we are west of, the, west of the airport. We are north of the southern state. You know, we don't feel very neglected. We feel very neglected in there, all right? My kids go to Farmdale High School, all right? My kids went to Howitt. They crossed, my daughter's in seventh grade in Howitt right now, every day after school. There's about 50 kids that cross Howitt and go to, there's a Starbucks over there in the village of Farmdale. It's not the town of Babylon, it's Tobey, all right? But they're East Farmdale residents who go there, all right? This is gonna be an issue. Uh, looking at the crowd behind me, I'm very happy there's people here, all right? I think the last meeting, there was a larger crowd. I think a lot of the reason it wasn't so much of a crowd here today, 6 p.m., the last meeting went down, a lot of people feel the fix is in. I don't want to, you know, I know, I don't, I don't want to, I'm sorry, guys. Right. We feel very neglected there. The traffic, the traffic study, I feel it's skewed. All right, there's nothing right, he's saying. He's doing multiplication, all right, in this track. I'm sorry, he's doing addition. He's adding a few hundred more trucks to a thousand more cars, uh, it's, uh, or vehicles. He's going to call them vehicles. This, he's forgetting the X's and Y's here, all right? Multiplication of the truck. When a truck is at a light uh, in the morning, they're saying it's going to be in, in uh, AM shifts, traveling eastbound. Traffic is backed up on Con uh, Con uh, Con Conklin Street, past Birch to Cedar sometimes. You can wait there 10, 15, 25 minutes sometimes. The reason is, is it's not cars, it's not vehicles, it's tractor trailers. Tractor trailers, I know they're assessing, but not in this area. They don't do any good here. They, need, they take a while to shift, and if there's two in front of you, you're gonna get stuck at the light. There's a red light camera there. The reason a red light camera's there is it's a dangerous intersection. People have been killed at the corner of Conklin and Route 110. People have been killed on Conklin Street. She brought up the five uh, high school kids that were killed. And, uh, Governor Cuomo stepped up, closed the road down, made it small, and made more traffic. You go westbound, there's traffic. You travel from East Farmingdale, you try and get on a 135. Now, today was a little different. You know, it took me about 30 minutes, but there was construction. One lane was open. While I'm in that one lane, I know where I'm going tonight, and I take notice. Everything is a truck around me, a lot of large tractor trailers. What's coming in my truck? I'm breathing in the fumes of the diesel, VOCs, whatever you want to call it, volatile <laughs> gases, all right? They care about the environment, all right? This isn't the area for them. They say they want to be environmentalists, they, uh, they want to do something nice for the environment, don't put it there. Put it up by, route, uh, by, by the 495, all right? Close, these, these trucks are operating at their, you know, their, their steady speed, 
what they belong, the, the, the engines where it belongs, and the, the, the environmental impact will be a lot less, all right? I mean, we're here today, you know, because tra traffic's a problem. You know, we're talking to this is a zoning board because they want to go bigger. All right, how big, you know, how big do they want to go? You know, that I thought it was 24 bays last time they said. I can't, there's no minutes. Now they want to go 21 bays. Place looks great. I know in 20 years it's going to look like crap. Maybe, you know, the bays are the problem. Restrict them at the bays. You know, every place on, on Conklin Street has one bay. All those factories, one bay. Why do they need 21 bays? Give them one base. Give them three bays. Now, now they can't operate with three bays. You know, that'll help with, every with all our complaints back here. All right? You restrict the bays. You restrict the size. And it restricts the traffic problem, the congestion problem, the noise problem, safety, environmental factors in the area. This building has no positive impact in the area. Negative. Everything's a negative. There's no positive impacts. My taxes go higher every year. What am I getting in return? <laughs> I mean, I'll make a proposal. Well, you, they sell the place. Town of Babylon, Suffolk County, New York State, buy it. East Farmdale has nothing. Make an athletic facility there. My, both my girls go to that bubble and practice winter lacrosse. Make it a large indoor facility. I'm sure there's money to be made with the suede sports are today. There's no reason for that, you know, for the, for the where they are there. Just want to, uh, they said a couple of things today. 42 trailer trips is not, you know, an hour. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Seven trips, a, he said seven, then he said maybe nine trips an hour. That's 206 tractor trailers. He said maybe up to 39. They said 30, I'm sorry, he said up to 42 or something. They said 39 last time. They don't know what's going to go on there. The bays are the problem. 24 bays allows. 21. 20, I'm sorry, it was 24 last time. I apologize. The, 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 the it's okay. Say 21. 21, 21 bays yeah. is the issue. All right. And when he talked about the traffic, he, got, he deviated around the traffic tonight. He talked about parking. All right. Parking, I don't care about parking. Everybody's got plenty of parking up there. That's not the problem. Big, beautiful place would be great. I would rather it stay the way it is. But it's traffic is the issue. And he said it's going to be state of the art. That's the state minimum. All right. What happens in 20 years? PC Rich is on a private road. They brought that up before. The airport. You know, someone brought up the airport. I'm real quick on the airport, and I'm going to finish up. We allowed all those buildings in the airport. There's new hangars in there. There's an app. We can look behind me. Everyone behind me, there's an app on your phone called Flight Radar 24, I believe it's called. Look it up. You see those planes taking off, all right? This is why we feel abused in East Farmingdale. Those planes leaving those hangars are, belong to Teterboro and Kennedy Airport and LaGuardia Airport. It's too expensive, so they'll come here where we're paying high taxes, but it's lower than them, and they'll park their, their planes here. All those planes. Now look them up. Watch where they go. Follow that plane. It goes, it's, going, it's, it's going to uh, Kennedy. It's going to Teterboro. Follow the line. Go off your phone. Go back on it. Look at that plane. Then it's leaving with its executives. Don't we feel abused here? How much is going to happen? This place belongs on 495. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> I'll take the gentleman there. My name is uh, Ken Dickinson, 51 Wall Street. I live uh, approximately a little bit south and a little bit west of there. Do you prefer to tell the truth? I always tell the truth, <laughs> especially to my wife. <laughs> yeah. Now, Go ahead. hey, easy now. So I've lived in this area for 35 years. I grew up in Farmdale, so I've been there almost my whole life. This was an industrial area which served Fairchild Republic, which saved World War, you know, World War II, the planes were made there, saved America. But that changed. It's now easy. <laughs> so now they changed that to retail. Uh, several years ago, there was a whole study that they wanted to make, do some big changes over in that airport plaza and bring a residential, open up the railroad station. That's why I think that no one's touched that property that really needs to be touched over by 
you know, air, airport plaza, which is a real ugly thing. Um, for one thing, I, I also understand that this property is in a different school district. It's in Half Hollow Hills. That tax money goes towards Half Hollow Hills. It doesn't really go towards Farmingdale. Someone mentioned that because part of that area is Half Hollow Hills. Not 100% on that. But if you look a little bit to the west, that whole block there, Eastern Parkway, was all industrial. It's slowly turning to residential area. They said they can't build residential, but yeah, things are turning that way and we're going residential. Um, the biggest thing too, the, the way they drew this thing, that driveway, they got one driveway for 18 wheelers. Now, you're gonna have them going in and out at the same time? No. Tractor tails, you know they gotta go out and make a big turn. So right where that building is, you have two lanes going into one. So now you have another situation. So you got a tractor trailer stopping to let someone out, and then you got a car coming around the other side. It's, you know, it's gonna be, there's a, accidents will happen there without having a light put in. Also, the tractor trailer, they don't care about the drivers, but the drivers are gonna go, listen, they punch in their GPS. What's the fastest route out of here? Oh, 135. And it's also gonna be easier to make a right out of there than a left, especially during traffic. I don't know if you guys have been through Farmingdale and know what it's like to go from Main Street to 135 at almost any point of the day. It is really bad, it's getting worse. And us local people, we, you know, <laughs> we, we try to find other ways to go around it. Um, as far as the size of the building, obviously there's codes to the size of the building that you're restricted to build to a certain size and they're looking for variants to go bigger. These are the rules that have been in effect and I ask you, the board, to stick to the rules. Do not allow them to build bigger. We don't know what's gonna go on. They're saying a warehouse and not disclosing who their tenant may be. We think it's Amazon because they built a lot of buildings for Amazon. But even UPS has one way in and one way out. They don't have one shared driveway. Um, we don't know what's gonna happen down the, down the road. Uh, Warehousing may be out in a couple of years. They may not be in need for warehousing. I look around now, I drive all over Long Island in my business. Uh, Woodbury and the 135, there's a big warehouse there, empty. They just built two huge warehouses over by the old Newsday. Nothing's happening there yet. Uh, Ruby's Costume, big piece of property north on 110, which would be ideal for these guys to buy up and build there, because it'd be perfect for them. Um, but that's an empty building big lot. Um, I just don't think it's a thing, but also down the road, warehousing may not be that big, this lot. They may decide, hey, we want to start manufacturing. We have a tenant that wants to manufacture here. They got 300 employees though. Now that parking space is not enough and they're gonna start parking in our neighborhood. So that's why I ask you to stick to the codes. Do not give them their variance. Thank you. I'll take the lady back there. You're good. Yeah. Name and address for the record? Sharon Bardash Evers, 43 Walnut Avenue East. Um, and you, you affirm to tell the truth? I do. Okay. What would you like to tell us? Oh, I'd like to tell you a few things. Um, <laughs> I want to remind you about the lanes on Conklin, first of all, in 2014, we tragically lost those five high school students, and it went from two lanes in one, you know, going east-west, and two lanes going, going the other way, to one lane each way, and just a turning lane in the middle. So it's 30 miles per hour, and I don't care what your traffic study says, unless you live there, you have no idea how hard it is to get onto Conklin every day, pretty much any time of the day. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I would like you to stop calling my neighborhood uh, zoning industrial G district because I know I'm just on the other side. I love my district. I love my school district. I love Farmingdale. I'm a Daler through and through at this point. Didn't grow up here like the rest of the people that do, but I've lived here since 1989. And when we first moved here, you didn't need a light to get out of my neighborhood. And now we have a light at the end of our block because there was no way we could possibly get out. If they think that they're gonna be able to make a left 
to get out of their warehouse distribution center, especially an 18-wheeler, and they are sadly mistaken. Now, they talk about P.C. Richards. P.C. Richards is an industrial area. It, you know, I mean, they have a light at the end of their block. It's a lovely building. It's, you know, they get a lot of tractor trailers coming in and out. That's terrific. No houses. Not a single, not a neighborhood, nothing. So that's the first thing. Second thing is they did some nice anecdotal, you know, history there or looking into, you know, other areas. We are not Teterboro. We are not Newark. We are Farmingdale. That's a huge, that's a huge um, neighborhood right there. Kids going to school, um, kids walking on Conklin, kids driving on Conklin. I mean, high school students driving on Conklin, you know, truck, car, who wins? We know that. We have middle schoolers walking on Conklin because we have a middle school down the block. We know that they have their own issues, the way they think things through, not so clearly. That's that you have to take that into account. We have a, a booming Main Street in Farmingdale. It's not Babylon, that's true. It's not Babylon, but it's booming. And if people can't get there, won't be booming anymore. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I feel completely railroaded, completely railroaded. I've looked up how long this has been going through. I've, I've written to every single politician I can possibly write to, all the way up to the governor. Everybody says it's not in their, you know, it's not our jurisdiction. Suffolk County Executive Ed Romain said, not my jurisdiction, but in, I think, August of 2023 or something, or, or 2022, excuse me, Steve Ballone had a whole staff report for it, so it is jurisdiction. I'm, it's, I just feel like we are forgotten. We are a forgotten neighborhood. There are a ton of us living there. Our houses were built in the early 1900s, um, uh, 1922 on Cedar Street, 1936 for me. And I think your zoning loan is uh, probably around 1950s or so. Things change. I don't want to hear that it because it's a zoning, it's zoned industrial, it can only be industrial. Things change. If you go closer to the, the train station, every back there was all industrial. Hangers and then pavers and all sorts of apartments. Oh, a miracle. It got rezoned. It's just not a good fit. It's a great fit on 110. It's a great fit near the 495 where there are no residents. There are no neighborhoods. You have a ton of people living in there and we're just across the street from a two lane street. That it's just not a good fit. And I don't know how else to tell you this, but I'm just tired of being forgotten. I'm tired of it. That's it. Thank you. Name and address for the record? Wade Holtz, 21 Cedar Avenue, East Farmdale, New York. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, the food's <coughs> no problem here for you. <laughs> you affirm to tell yes. the truth? <laughs> Got you. Okay. What would you like to tell us? All right. Um, I'm one of those people who lived there my whole life, 59 years. The whole thing, you heard everything, what everybody's saying. Uh, Marjam, who's right next to the soccer place, okay? It's now FBM. There's a sign there. I took a picture of it. I sent it to Rich Schaefer with a couple other pictures of the people parked in the center lane, the trucks from PC Riches and so on, okay? Um, the trucks are parked out on Conklin Street. There's a sign that says, hold on, let me get this up here. All right. All delivery stop, park on street, bring paperwork into shipping trailer. I come out of my block, I'm on Cedar, I'm right across from the soccer. Trucks park on both sides. I can't see, I got a, thank God I got a truck. I got edge out slow, okay? It's dangerous, okay? It's totally dangerous. Those people don't care, all right? They park wherever they wanna park. I got pictures of them s sitting right there waiting, idling their trucks. Okay, state laws five minutes for a diesel to run. Okay, then it's the sun. Hopefully, Rich Schaefer will turn around and send some rangers over there. And uh, what else? Now, what happens when those 21 bays are full? Is it going to be, they're going to put out a sign that says, park on Conklin Street, wait to come in. Okay, just like Marjam or FBM. Okay. 
What else we got? Oh, yeah, Conger, uh, between Conk Cedar and Birch is where it turns to one lane, right there. Okay, it funnels down, right coming out to ends it right at Cedar. Okay, so and it's right in front of the soccer place. I come out there every morning. <coughs> this morning I come out there's the trucks parked down the road again. I go to a, as you see, I'm a fireman. Forty-five years I've been saving lives for this town of Babylon. Okay, I love my district. I love the town of Babylon. It's a great place to live. I've been saving lives there for 45 years, me and my pal. I couldn't get out. I'm a realist. I'm not going to say, oh, it took me 10 minutes. It took me about a minute and a half to edge out to get on Conklin Street to go to an MVA. Okay? You, I know you, you're all adults here. We all know life. Time is life. A minute for CPR saves lives. Fires, people trapped in buildings, okay? It's a danger for our, our community and the people who travel through our community, okay? It's just dangerous. You're putting lives in danger if they come in this building. Yeah, nice building, give you props, okay? But you know what? The issue here is traffic and safety and saving lives. We don't want to lose any more lives. And it's just not, I hear five times with the, the five kids. It's not just the five kids. It's all the other people that died on that road, too. I've been there 59 years, okay, and transported to the hospital and held. I don't want to get graphic, but you know what I'm talking about, okay? Got a good community over there. I want it to stay a good community. It's not a place for that building. Price Parkway, they brought it up. That's a nice place. Smith Street, Daniel, Mill Bar, got plenty. Edison Avenue, got plenty of buildings over there. Plenty of spots, appropriate spots to put this building, okay? Without putting lives in jeopardy. I've seen it, I've been here my whole life. Thank you for letting me speak, appreciate it very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Maria Ansley. I live at 27 Oak View Avenue, uh, right near the train station and very, very close to that building. You affirm to tell the truth? I affirm to tell the truth. Is that the only place you drive on Oak View? Absolutely. What would you like to tell us? Okay, I live very close to that building and there have been, I'm not even gonna say about the future, but in the past, one of the people on Eastern Parkway did rent to Amazon trucks who sped down my street where my children play. And not only that, but 18 wheelers take shortcuts down Eastern Parkway as well, right by my house where my children play. I am a veteran. I'm currently getting disability for fumes fumes that trucks also produce, noise that trucks also produce. Trucks have been driving down Eastern, driving down Oakview. Now they're gonna be driving down Hempstead Turnpike where my daughter walks down to go to the middle school where I bike right through downtown where revenue occurs, it's called revenue I don't know how much revenue a warehouse builds compared to other items that might be built there. Uh, hopefully a cost analysis was done in very valuable land that could make a lot of revenue without the trucks that sped down my street, almost ran me over. My middle finger got a lot of exercise while those trucks were there. So. It really did affect me in the past, and I have no reason to believe that it won't affect me in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Name and address for the record, please. Hold on. Uh, Peter Mouja, 19 Birch Avenue, East Farmingdale, New York. You affirm to tell the truth? I do. Uh, just to, I'd like to add, continue to add on to the people's uh, things. I'm not going to go into full detail. Uh, 
I agree that it's not an appropriate space uh, for us in our residential area. As uh, the proposal, if you looked at the proposal that, pro uh, sorry, this com the company, I'm gonna butcher the name, so I'm not even gonna attempt it. Uh, ProLogic, that's it. Uh, when they gave you their PowerPoint presentation, they did not mention, as mentioned earlier, the hundreds of residents that are right around his cursor that will be affected by this uh, traffic. Uh, I agree with the, F the, the study by FBM, the amount of trucks that go through there. Uh, we, again, are not Newark, uh, and then they're not considering the residential impact and the air pollution that it will have for the residents. Again, I've been, I've been living in that area for 41 years, homeowner for the past eight of them. Uh, I believe that uh, this is not a good location. Two new items that are to be brought up to the board that was not mentioned earlier. They mentioned peak hours from 6 to 9 a.m., correct? What about peak hours from 7 to 4? Or oh, 4 to 7, I apologize, thought that, 4 to 7. What are the other peak hours that, that they have? You cannot just have one peak hour. Rush hour is there's an a.m. peak and a p.m. peak. What is their peak p.m. hours? That was never mentioned by them. You also talk about the imp impact study and about getting in and out of there. What about the nice buses that drive up and down that? I have gotten to accidents trying to get, and I live right across the street from Farmingdale Lanes. I have gotten to two accidents where a nice bus told me to go through and then a car hit me going, making a trying to make a left-hand turn going uh, west onto, west onto uh, Concord. They're not, they, they have a very skewed, limited amount of information from this impact study. And again, I will let, we, we need you, my last thing is we've talked about being neglected. You gentlemen and ladies here have the power to hear the constituents here right now to help us preserve our way of life in the town of Babylon. If you cannot do that, then shame on the town of Babylon for not allowing our residents to live there in peace and safe and, and not have pollutants, air pollution, and other things that we already deal with on a daily basis with the growing economy uh, uh, in New York and on Long Island. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll take the, hold on, I'll take the lady back there. She had her hand up before. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Laura Mayer. I live at 90 Maple Street, Farmingdale. You affirm to tell the truth? I do. What would you like to tell us? Uh, I've lived in Farmingdale for 35 years. My children were raised here. Um, and happily, I'm here to say that they've bought homes in Farmingdale. And one of the houses are literally like two blocks from where you're thinking about building this warehouse. Matthew's not here today. He had some uh, work to do. I'm a grandma now. He has a little girl. I question you, have any of you taken the time to just drive by? Have you, one of you, sitting there? Yes. Imagine your children. That's what everybody here is concerned with. I'm not gonna say, repeat everything that they have, Again, it's for the, our future children. You're gonna hear it from one side and the other. We're just asking you. We're not all the nit picking about parking and even traffic at this point. It's everywhere. It's about putting something that doesn't belong in the area. And I just ask the board to please consider the children. We all have them. We all, they're gonna have grandchildren and we want a safe place for them to go walk, play, and enjoy the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Name and address for the record, please. My name is James Carmen. I live at 15 Oak Street East in Farmingdale. And do you affirm to tell the truth? Of course. Okay. Would you like to tell um, us? I used to work at the Javits Center in the city, 
used to dealing with truckers, trucks, and I know I'm not supposed to talk to them, it's to you, so you, you, maybe you can ask them a question. <coughs> Excuse me. You have four, uh, most trucks are trailers, are 50, are 53 footers, and then you have the over the road guys, and you have the, the day cabs. Day cab being most of the time just a single axle, over the road guys having double axles, you know, you're talking, I, I forget now, over 80 feet. When you're exiting that facility, if they're gonna make a right to go to 135 down Conklin, they've gotta come out across and go into the opposing lanes in order to make that swing come out. Same thing when you go to uh, 110, because it's a straight, in, according to that picture I saw with the slides they had, it's a straight in and out. If you were able to do a fan driveway or you know an, an entrance and an exit that way, maybe they would uh, stand a better chance, but they would have to go into the opposing lane of traffic in order to make that swing. I did it for 23 years, watching and doing, ran the roadway at the Javits Center, dealt with a lot of trucks. So that's it, that's all, it's just a question, if you could ask him that. Thank you. You got it, thank you. <laughs> name and address Tom. for the record, please. Uh, my name is Tom Taylor live on 28 Locust Avenue East, Farmingdale, New York. You affirm to tell the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, I grew up in Farmingdale. I've been here since 1955, and there were still farms on the other side of uh, 110, so we didn't have to worry about any of this stuff, you know? They've but anyway, uh, the prologist representative stated that they don't know what hazardous chemicals will be stored in this warehouse. Well, I worked for Wagner Seed Company for like eight or nine years, and then 39 years ago, in June of 1985, the warehouse burned down. It was located approximately one mile west along the railroad track from right this, th that area was speaking about. Uh, 1,000 people were evacuated that night due to the uh, hazardous chemicals. Do not let this happen here. I would like to put this, uh, put this article on the record. I tried to get it in when I sent an email, but I don't know how to do any of that stuff with the pictures. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. That's fine. <laughs> thank you. Would anyone else like to be heard on this application? I seen him first, I'll get you next. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, it's Jonathan Lyons, uh, 20 Hawthorne Street in Farmingdale. Okay, and did you fill out a card? Or I did not. I'll when you get after. done, all right, yep. thank you. What would you like, to, uh, do you affirm to tell the truth? I do. What would you like to tell us? Uh, real quick, just to add, I've worked and lived in Farmingdale for 20 years. I worked at a warehouse distribution center on Allen Boulevard. Ton of warehouses there, ton of warehouses space there, so it's not a need in this area. 40,000 um, square foot was our place. Four trucks during peak hours. This is three times the size. They don't know what's going in there. It's gonna be way above of what they're even estimating. There's a reason there's 21 bays. We had two bays. We had trucks waiting, trucks in and out. 21 bays for eight trucks. It's not feasible. It's not feasible in the area. There's no, the, repeating just what everyone said regarding the tra traffic in the area does not support it. There's better suited places. That's all, thank you. Somebody else, there you go. <laughs> I, yeah, come on. <laughs> Can I give him the card? Yes, please. I guess we should start him a little short. Na there you, Can you go. Can you hear me? Name and address for the record. Freddie Chaffaro, 147 Staples Street, from New York. My father was born on Beth Page Golf Course before it was a golf course. <laughs> I want to thank everyone. Do you affirm to tell board. the truth? I tell the truth. Okay. I want to thank everybody on the zoning board because I was on the zoning board for the village of Farmer. It's not an easy job, and you took, 
you had some very good questions. But the problem tonight is a lot of, there's a lot of ghost questions right here, right now, and it's not adding up. And I think the best way is I can't give you a $20, $30 bill because you think I'm greasing you. But I like to post tomorrow morning, go to the delicatessen, I'll buy you all lunch, not for five minutes, for a half hour, and count all the trucks and trails. You see it firsthand, because I quote legislators, I quote so many people, it's on your hands. And the only way you're gonna see it is by seeing it. You can hear what all these fine gentlemen said, it's great, but my grandma told me one thing, a wolf could lose his teeth, but it's still a wolf. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> would, would anybody else like to be heard on this application, ma'am? Name and address for the record, please. Linda Dangle, 5 Birch Circle North, Farmingdale. Can you do it for him to tell the truth? I do. Can you just get closer to oh, the sure. mic? It doesn't always pick sure. up real well. I do. Okay, thank you. I agree with my fellow community members <laughs> in Farmingdale. Um, to put a company like this, an industrial company, where again, to reiterate, they don't know who's going in there I can't believe that only nine tractor trailers are going to be coming in and out in this small neighborhood where I come, where I turn onto Conklin every morning off of Birch Ave. I try to make a right onto Conklin. And as of now, yes, like all my fellow community members, it's rough trying to make that right in peak hour. and to have the, the capacity of, of tractor trailers that they're speaking of, Conklin does not have the capacity to deal with this as well. Speaking of the children, that school down the road, I wouldn't want my ch child crossing the road when there's tractor trailers going in and out. Plus the fact that right next to that, there's a church. Now think about community church members on a Sunday morning trying to cross the street after, after church service with all these tractor trailers coming in. I, I just, it's just, you don't, we don't have the capacity. And again, big business doesn't think about us. They don't think about the neighborhood, the community and what, it, what effects it's gonna have on us. Um, uh, with a one lane in and out, again, like they spoke of, I live it every day. It's, the traffic is just gonna be tremendous. And it, it's, uh, it is, it's gonna be a danger as well. Car accidents, people getting hit, track trailers can't see, we can't see them, they can't see us. And so, thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Would anyone else like to be heard? Good evening, Chris Verdi, 20 Birch Avenue East, Farmingdale. Okay, you do affirm and tell the truth. Yes, sir. What would you like to tell? You can pull uh, the mic up a little if you want. Thank you for taking the time to hear all of us, uh, obviously. We all care deeply about this community, this neighborhood, and we're concerned about what the future lies. Um, I'm a 13 year resident of Farmingdale. I didn't grow up here uh, like many of my fellow neighborhood uh, members have, um, but I've obviously grown to love the community uh, and all that it affords. Um, I have my young son here with me who's seven years old. I have another five year old at home. They're the future of this neighborhood, not me, not the, the older people that are here. No offense to anybody. Uh, <laughs> they've been here, they've experienced this town and all that it affords. I want the same thing for my son and my daughter when they get to be my age and their age as well. This is a great town, a great community. Town of Babylon, we're a part of you. We want you to stand up and hear our voices and be what we need in order to help us protect the neighborhood. Um, again, the traffic, the congestion, it's all been said. Uh, this type of a hub does not belong right across from a neighborhood. Uh, I appreciate that they wanna bring more stuff to our town. The town, as someone said earlier, is booming with the main street and all the other aspects of what good Farmingdale brings to 
uh, Nassau and Suffolk. It's a dual, uh, you know, win for both both counties. Um, we love living there, and we don't want it to change. So we just want you to hear our voices, and please do what you can to help us keep our neighborhood what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Name and address for the record, Bill please. Bill Hartel, 11 Birch Circle, East Farmingdale. Okay, had you affirm to tell the truth? Of course. Go ahead. I don't really have to add anything to what, every, what everybody said. I just got some questions. Who in this building yeah. approves of what they want to do? Who disapproves of what they want to do? That's all I got to say. You saw it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> thank, thank you. Would anyone else like to be heard on this application? Okay. I'll ask the applicant to come back up. So I have a couple of questions before you, you make your final comments, too. So. The driveway where the tractor trailers are going in, so uh, they're coming in and going out that same driveway, right? Yes, I was going to call up Mr. Uh, Voorhees to speak to that to that uh, topic that was raised. Okay, let's let's talk about it then. Mr. Voorhees, you heard the comment about the driveway's ability to accommodate tractor trailers going in and out. Can you speak to that, please? Sure, I can. Um, so the, the entrance for the, uh, the trucks to access the site um, varies between at the property line, about 72 feet wide, and at its narrowest point, 40 feet wide. The, um, the inbound lane is 24 feet wide, the outbound is 16. Turning maneuvers have been analyzed for both <laughs> inbound and outbound. You tell me we can get two tra trucks in there at the same time? We have large radiuses. Um, we have a, a 30, 35 and 30 foot radius on each side of those entrances, accommodating the large vehicles. So you can get two vehicles in and out at the same time? That is correct. And, okay, I'll leave it at that. Um, thank, thank you. Just for the record, what school district is this property in? I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know. Do we, do we, is it East Farmingdale? According to our real estate expert, it's East Farmingdale. It's East Farmingdale? Whoa, 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 whoa. The reason why I don't know is frankly because it's not relevant to the variances being requested. Give us a second, we'll, put, we'll bring it up. We'll bring it up. Okay, sit there. We'll get to that. Uh, what happens, all the bays are full, what happens with tractor trailers coming in at that point in time? Do you want to address that? Farmingdale? Yeah, well, it's Farmingdale. So, school district's Farmingdale. It's Farmingdale. The school district is Farmingdale, just to answer that question. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Based upon the uh, the analysis we performed, uh, we don't expect the loading bays to be full, um, but essentially the the on-site staging allows for the vehicles to to allow for trucks to enter and exit at the same time. Um, so we have three three queuing areas on site, and and that will allow for trucks to enter and exit. Now, as far as our expectation, we don't expect all the bays to be full. So, peak PM hours, what's the peak PM hours and what's the... I, I was going to make that point. The gentleman r said, you know, we only referenced the weekday AM peak hours. The weekday PM peak hours is actually less trips. You have a total of 39 vehicular trips, 32 of which are vehicles, 27 out, 5 in, and 7 trucks, 3 out, 4 in. So it's actually less than the AM peak period. What's that? What's that time frame? I'm just curious. That is between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Four and seven. 
How long are the trailers? Are they vary. Well, how what can be the, what could be the largest trailer? Let's put it that so way. So the uh, the site was de designed for the uh, the standard 53 foot trailer. This is uh, modeled with the Ashto uh, WB67 trailer. So it's the largest uh, trailer that can be modeled using the Ashto conventional vehicles. So it's 53 feet. Correct. Thank you. Stay up here. Stay, stay up here, just in case. It's yeah. high. Uh, what else I got? Hold on. That's taken into That is correct. That is taken into So it's not 53 feet, actually. The, the trailer, the trailer is, is 53 trailer feet, feet plus the cab. Correct. Depending on what the cab might be. Okay. So plus the cab. Um, I think the traffic study was brought up and it's, it, that it had the wrong date on it. Is Mr. Chairman, I ask that you all review the traffic study. It is entirely accurate. It, and that's not just me saying that, that's the planning department and that's Cameron Engineering saying it. The, the, the planning department had an independent traffic consultant look at the traffic study and the parking assessment. They deemed that the methodology employed in studying the traffic, the levels of service at the various intersections, the trip generation, and the parking demand were adequately performed. The analyses were correctly, uh, the data was per correctly collected, and then the conclusions are reasonable. And as noted earlier, on the parking variance, which is the, one of the variances we're asking, they indicated they have no objection to the parking variance being requested. So okay. we, we definitely ask you to review the, the, the traffic we'll study. Do, we'll all do that. So, um, Okay, briefly, would you like yes, to sum thank up? thank you. Very thank, briefly. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we recognize that it's, it's been a while. And, and I'm going to start off simply by saying that uh, the comments tonight are, are very, very similar to the comments that we heard back on January 8th. And as I said to the planning board, it is very clear that there's a lot of frustration amongst the residents in East Farmingdale because it is a busy roadway, it is a busy area. That being said, it is not incumbent upon the applicant to solve all the problems associated with the, with the Conklin Street corridor. You can't. Excuse me? No. The Conklin, Please. The Conklin Street everybody. corridor or the traffic in the, in the uh, area uh, at large. We keep hearing that we picked a bad spot and that this is not the right location. The fact of the matter is, if we were here before the town board asking for a rezoning of this property, or before you asking for a special use permit to permit this use, then those assertions would be legitimate. Unfortunately, based on the zoning, and I, and I know a certain neighbor says they don't want to hear what the zoning is, but the fact of the matter is, the zoning of our property and all of the properties north of, of Conklin is industrially those are industrially zoned properties. And in the industrial zoning district, a warehouse operation and facility is an unconditionally permitted use. It cannot be out of character with the area because it is a use specifically permitted in the area. So consequently, it can't be the wrong area. I recognize that there are residential properties to the... I recognize that there are residential properties to the south of Conklin. Those properties are, are there without question, and I'm sure they do experience difficulties. But again, the comments that we heard go, uh, provide no justification for the denial of the variances that we seek. One gentleman said that stick to the rules, and it's true the zoning board has the responsibility of maintaining the integrity of the zoning code. But the zoning board is also charged with granting variances when the benefit to the applicant outweighs the detriment to the community. Here, we've established that the benefit to the applicant of having the larger uh, footprint actually preserves the appearance of the area by keeping the building lower and, more, impo more importantly for the applicant, 
provides them with both operational efficiency and marketability. At the same time, the detriment to the community associated not with the use overall, but with that incremental increase, the, the, there is no detriment because the impact is not felt based upon solely that increase in the, in the square footage. So we would assert that applying the balancing test, that all of the criteria have, have been met, and that the variances being sought should be granted. One, my last question. Yes, I'll sir. ask the last question, okay? You got one? Then all right. Um, did, you <laughs> did you try or look at any other locations to put this warehouse? And this is just a question just for Mike. So. I, 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 I don't believe so. Do, do you know if Prologis looked anywhere else in the area? Not, 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 not that we're aware of. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> but again, it doesn't. Uh, with all due respect to the board, it doesn't matter. I, I this get is that, a, but it was a question, and it was a question. Use. I, you know, I'd like, yeah. you know, if you didn't, that's fine. I just, I want to ask the question. Yeah. Whether we did or not, we can't say. John, I'm sorry. Earlier I asked you what you'd be storing and, and putting in and out of there, and you, you said you didn't know. And the woman spoke of four other locations where you had fire, you had some other hazardous materials. How can we assure the neighbors and the, and the community that this is not going to happen? The building will be built to specifications required by the town, the county, the state. The building will be fully sprinklered. All hazardous, if there are going to be hazardous materials stored there, and yes, we don't know if, if we will have a tenant who is in the business of storing any type of hazardous vehicle, as uh, 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 hazardous material as defined by the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. All of those facilities will have to comply with all the requirements and standards imposed by those agencies. And again, that is an operational issue in a use that is unconditionally permitted. So the operation of a warehouse entails that. Now, I, I understand that there is this incredul incredulous feeling that we don't know who the tenant is. But again, the nature of warehousing is the need is, is short term. And until we have our entitlements, no tenant is going to sign a lease or enter into even an LOI because they don't know how far out we're going, it, or if we're ever going to get our approvals, and when we can actually start to build and complete construction. Do you know what happened at the other locations? You're aware of any of the, uh, I, just for the peace of mind of the community? I, I, I don't, because okay. frankly. Let me, ask, let me ask you this question. Would, yeah. you, would you agree to a condition that there never be hazardous chemicals in this warehouse? I'd have to find out from management. Excuse me. Uh, again, I'm being told that because we don't know who our tenants are, we can't agree to a, a, a flat-out prohibition on the storage of hazardous materials. But what we can agree to is a condition that, in addition to compli or full compliance with the Suffolk County Department of Health Services, that we would notify the town of any intended storage of such, a, of, of such materials in the building. Okay. Thank you. Thank well, you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, somebody's wanted to put something in the record? Yeah. You got to come to the microphone. <laughs> sir, you can move. You oh, can, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just putting this in. This is it. She's going to put this in the record and then we're done. This was created for the planning board. 
and i now found out that you guys don't even know about this book that was created with all the facts about the company so i'd like to present it into evidence or whatever sure. yep we'll make it part of the record okay all right so we're going to close the hearing we're going to reserve decision we are going to keep the record open for any comments from the public until Wednesday, April the 3rd, close of business. If you want to respond, you have until then. We will not accept anything after that. We will also keep the record open for the applicant until Wednesday, April the 17th, close of business to respond to anything that comes in in the time period, okay? Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It has to be addressed to the zoning board as zoning comments if you want to add anything. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. you coming down. We'll take everything into consideration. That concludes.